Well, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you're joining us from. We are so thrilled to have you with us today. We're going to give people a few minutes to join. I know they're kind of rolling in here uh, very quickly, actually. Uh, so before we kick off our community conversation, uh, if you have been on any of these before, you know uh, the drill. Why don't you put into the chat where you're joining us from? We'd love to see where everyone is coming in from today. All right, Sean's out in Chile, Bend, Oregon. We've got Aaron in Denver, Beth from Central Ohio. Hello, neighbor. Uh, Andre from Chicago. There's David from Philly. We're ready to go. We're all good to go. Uh, Frank from the Netherlands. That's fantastic. Uh, Scott calling in from Chino, California. Wow, they are just rolling in. We've got Italy, France, Hungary. This is amazing. Sweden and United Arab Emirates. Fantastic. What a diverse group we have today. Well, we're going to uh, go ahead and start kicking it off. Welcome to today's AEC Roadmap Ask Me Anything event. We're doing this a little bit differently this year. Uh, in previous years, we kind of ran it separately, but this year we're combining with our community conversations and a big thank you to Sean Hurley for uh, letting us do that. So today with our community conversations, these are virtual meetings, uh, meetups featuring expert speakers from across our Autodesk community. Sessions range from deep dives, tips and tricks, and live demonstrations on products such as AutoCAD, Revit, D Dynamo, and Fusion 360. Uh, we do roundtables on industry insights, emerging trends, career stories, and more all from our Autodesk community, not always Autodesk employees. So all experience levels from beginning to expert are welcome. Of course, we have our safe harbor statement. If we make any forward looking statements, this is a roadmap session, I don't want you to make any purchasing decisions based on those statements. If you are making purchasing decisions, take a look at the software in its state today and that alone. Just a few housekeeping things before we begin. You are able to enable live transcription of audio in 11 languages. To use live captions in the meeting, go to your meeting controls and select more options to turn on those live captions. We are taking questions today via Slido. So if you've never used slido.com before, uh, you would open a, another web page, go to slido.com and put in the code Revit AMA23. This session is being recorded and the recording will be posted on the community conversations page when ready. Okay, so today's panelists, we have a whole host of panelists today. My name is Kimberly Furman. I'm the Revit Community Manager and I will be your host and moderator today. I'm gonna to ask each of our panelists to introduce themselves very quickly and let us know what their favorite feature is from the latest release of Revit, which would be 2023.1, or their favorite feature or enhancement that is on our public roadmap. So I'm gonna start with our newest member, Matt. Uh, Matt, would you introduce yourself to our community? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Kimberly. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Matt Arsenault, and I am a product manager on the Revit team focused on data workflows and interoperability. Um, I think to go with my favorite enhancement for 2023.1 is something we showcased at AU is our data exchanges and our interoperability workflows connecting with Rhino uh, to start along with Power Automate and Inventor a really exciting work that we're seeing to improve our interoperability with Revit across ecosystems of products. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Mike. Yep. Mike Engel, uh, product manager here as well, working on AEC data platform supporting data across that life cycle. And yeah, when I, uh, you know, much like Matt, the FDA, the data exchanges are super exciting, the interoperability with Rhino, um, but also, you know, very exciting to me is actually a little, a little thing that we released called the parameter service. So really starting to help standardize parameter definitions and make that easier across uh, multiple models and projects. So that's, that little thing is super exciting to me. That's awesome. That parameter service is is very cool stuff. Uh, Bogdan. 
Um, hey everyone, I'm uh, Bogdan Matei. I'm uh, the product manager for Avid Cloud Work Sharing based in uh, Bucharest, Romania. Um, I'm going to stick to the data part, and although it wasn't in 2023.1, uh, I'm uh, very excited that we got to do some advanced version management in Revit Cloud Work Sharing. So non-destructive rollback is there. We're not losing data anymore. Awesome. Thank you, Bogdan. And I'm very excited to introduce for the first time here, uh, Sam Anderson for Twinmotion. Sam? Hello, yes, I am Sam Anderson from Epic Games. Uh, I want to thank the Autodesk community for letting me join in today. I think I'm a little bit biased when it comes to the, the latest release and having the integration with Twin Motion. So if you're unfamiliar with that, I encourage you to check it out. I am super excited to see it now within the Revit user, user interface. And for users out there, you have access to it. So um, hopefully I can answer any questions today that you may have regarding that. But Thank you once again for having me here. All right. Thank you, Sam, and welcome. And Lily. Hello, everyone. Um, Lily Smith here. I'm on the uh, computational design team and excited in 2023 um, for the continuing improvements that we've been making to uh, Dynamo updates and generative design and Dynamo player. Um, we've got a new uh, a new release of Dynamo 2.17 um, that we're working on, including in the next version of Revit, um, which you can go and and test in the um, in the Revit preview, download it from the Dynamo site too. We welcome your feedback. Awesome. And just so everyone knows, we do have a computational design. Ask me anything coming up at one o'clock p.m. Eastern time today. So uh, if you do have specific computational design questions and are able to join us, then uh, feel free to, to share those there. And finally, I, I saved Harlan for last because he has some fantastic news for us. So Harlan. Thanks, Kimberly. And thanks, everyone, for joining today. Really appreciate the time uh, and all the questions that are already coming in. I'm Harlan Brum. I'm a product manager on the Revit team focused on our core capabilities and collaboration services. Um, so I've highlighted, I mean, there's so much new in 2023.1, I'd let everybody else talk about it, but I was excited about Twin Motion. Um, but the announcement I have to share uh, that Kimberly just mentioned is we have a new public roadmap, actually, that we just are announcing right now, today. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and share that with all of you. Oop, and I can't share my screen because Kimberly's doing it. So give her a second. I can yeah, <clears throat> stop sharing. Okay, thanks, Sean, for go. sharing the link. Uh, we will go ahead and get that going so you can take a look. So if you if you click on the link that Sean just shared, it'll take you right to this, this new page. Um, we have a little bit of an introduction at the beginning, just telling you how you can submit ideas and also how you can participate by submitting new feedback, which we think is really going to be great. Of course, we have our traditional safe harbor at the top. So each roadmap then comes in these sections below. Uh, and what's great about this is it actually shows you different statuses of the items. So you can go through in progress, up next, later, things that we launched in 2023.1 are here as well. And we added a new category for some of these called not now, which also indicates things we're not working on because we know that's a huge area of uh, interest for everyone of something that might not show up on the list. Um, each of these roadmaps is broken down by we have architecture, structure, MEP, as well as the Dynamo roadmap listed here. So you can go to one place, find everything that you're looking for. Um, each of these roadmaps, then you can scroll down and you'll have cards available for each of the items. And if you click on a card, it gives you some more detail, a little bit of information. And the cool thing is you can actually add uh, your commentary. So if you click on, this is critical for me, you even can uh, indicate why it's important and tell us a little bit about you, give us your email and submit that directly to the product team. So we're excited that you now have this better way to engage uh, with us and give feedback. And I just hit the, the escape key to close that if you're curious, you can see the little button um, that closes that feedback if you're if you want to get out of it. So this is an awesome way to kind of look at what's happening and we encourage all of you guys to go look up here. It's all updated. This is our new version. We are going to be retiring the Trello site if you're familiar with that. Um, Trello board is still up, but it's not up to date. So come here to check out what we're working on and doing. And uh, with that, I think I'll stop my share and let's we can dive into questions. 
All right, so I'm going to uh, actually share my screen one more time just to give you some more information uh, and the QR code, maybe, there we go. Okay, so the panelists' names if you need them, as well as our QR code for the slido.com. Just a reminder, uh, the session is focused on architecture and platform, okay? And we do have other uh, Ask Me Anything sessions coming up later this week. We'll give you links to those a little bit later in the session. Okay, so with that, we're, I'm going to jump over to Slido and see what questions we have. Of course, very gracefully jumping over to Slido. Here we go. Is Okay, Keith asked, is there likely to be any updates to the Revit family editor? Although there are many great features in this area, it seems to have stagnated over time. By way of example, allowing an array of one would be a great asset. I think I think Keith read our new may have read the new roadmap or site because array of one is on our new roadmap, uh, so folks can go check it out. So yeah, we're always considering updates and changes um, to things that are available, and we're looking at multiple options. So it's a great question, and yeah, array of one we think would be great. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry if I butcher this name, Sesa. Uh, it says there is no signs of wall real 3D layers, even in the last Revit beta. Should we be concerned that it will not be implemented in Revit 2024? Um, I don't know if I would say concerned should be the right word there. <laughs> um, we, you know, we try to release things when they're ready. Um, so if, you know, uh, something hasn't been available or not there, uh, probably a, an indication that we're still working on. It is on our public roadmap. It'll remain there and it is something we are working on. Um, but we want to make sure we deliver high quality functionality. So even if it shows as in progress or at certain stages in the cycle, we want to make sure that it's going to work well. And you can imagine redoing walls and adding wall layers is a pretty complicated project that impacts lots of areas of Revit. Um, so it's foremost of our mind that it's performant and works well. Uh, and solves all the actual needs you have for that project instead of just delivering something uh, and getting it out the door. So, um, you know, we're really cognizant and aware that delivering quality is, is hugely important and things have to work. So we will, you know, we make no promises when we're going to deliver something or when it's going to be available. Um, and that's why we say that, because we want to get it out the door in a way that makes sense. Okay. All right, and that probably answers Keith's question also in, in regard to the 3D wall layers um, being on the roadmap. So uh, thank you for that answer. Uh, Addis asks, will there be improvements for Revit legend views, especially possibility to tag wall, roof, et cetera, elements? Yeah, this is an area that's on our radar. It's not currently something we have on the, on the public roadmap, um, but you know, we'll, we always kind of consider these enhancements as we go forward where they fit, um, but right now, no. Okay. All right. Question from uh, the famous Brian Mackey. Is the old RC search in PB, I'm assuming project browser, going away? I like it since the search starts where a user's where a user RCs instead of from the top. Do you know what he's referencing? Um, I think I understand what he's referencing. He's referencing <laughs> some things that we're testing in our preview release right now. If you're interested in giving our preview release a try, you can provide feedback there. Um, I'm not going to be able to answer that in this setting because it gets into details about what we're working on. But okay. um, we're working on stuff around the project browser. To give you an idea. <laughs> Definitely in our product, in our public roadmap. And we would love for you guys to come. Uh, check it out in the preview release that we have going, which is now also an open opportunity, which we'll share that link. So it's a lot easier to sign up for our preview release um, than it was in the past. You can just go to go to feedback.audits.com and you can, as long as you're signed in, you'll see the Revit preview release available for you guys to try. Okay, Jason's second question made it to the top of the list. I'm going to scroll down to his first question just be, so we have context for the second one. Uh, Jason's first question is, why were there no new buttons for the categories introduced in Revit 2022, and is there a plan to add them? Right now, the only way to get to those new families in a model is drag and drop and cannot assign a keyboard sh shortcut either. Um, well, just to clarify, you can get to those just by going to load a component or place a, a basic component. Um, not everything in Revit has necessarily a button assigned to it. 
um, based on the category. We consider that based on importance of the item, how often it's accessed, how often it's used, and you know how easy it is to find. Um, because that was new functionality at the time, we decided that cluttering up the ribbon with more buttons for every category probably wasn't the ideal solution. Um, but you know, it's something we'll take feedback on and listen to as well if people are finding it hard to do that. Um, but yeah, you can get those if you just go to place a component, those new categories will all show up. Okay. Then I'm going to continue with Jason's second question. Additionally, why were these new categories all set to architecture and not MEP like audiovisual? Um, you know, that was basically done through research that we conducted on where they might make the most sense. Uh, talking to users, discussing, you know, in our preview release, where they worked, um, where they didn't work. And those are, you know, decisions that we make based on the filter and based on where we think people are most likely to be able to access them. Um, you know, in some cases, it was a decision made to kind of make the lists a little bit better. Um, but we, those are things we'd love to get feedback on as we go forward as well and adjust if it makes more sense, you know, or multiple sense to have them in multiple places. You know, we try to optimize based on the user's feedback, based on your commentary, where it makes sense, and um, listen to the, the customers who talk to us about it and we engage with. Awesome. All right. Uh, Peter, hi, Peter, has a twin motion question. So maybe this one's for Sam. Is there anything planned to support multi-user workflows, working with multiple users on the same model at the same time, just like we can work share in Revit? Yeah, this is a, a great question. And uh, one of the cool things about Twin Motion that I don't know if everyone who's using Twin Motion is aware of, but it's actually built on Unreal Engine. So some of the capabilities that are in Unreal Engine, we could potentially have support for that in the future. This is one that um, we don't have currently in Twin Motion, but this is something that you could do inside of Unreal Engine. So I don't have a timeline answer for you. We do not have that at the moment, but it's great to know that this is something that is important to you. So any of the questions that I see here today, I'll be taking back to uh, my team at Twin Motion and let them know that this is um, a concern of yours and we'll pass that information along. Great. All right, thank you, Sam. Uh, Colin has a few comments here. We'll try to go through them. Uh, I work on a multidisciplinary team that's spread across multiple offices. Sharing Revit, Revit data with offsite teams seems to still be a trick. I think speaking is a tricky process today. <laughs> Sharing Revit data with offsite teams seems to still be quite a tricky process. Are there any plans to streamline that workflow? Sure. I think I'll jump in there. Um, I mean, the, the the need to have AEC data and supporting the diversity that we're talking about is is absolutely front of mind. Um, you know, we've got the API that's existed for a number of years. There's a number of ways to get that data out, but you know, we recognize and we're you know thinking about how do we actually support that in a more diverse way and also do it in a standardized way. So. You know, you're already starting to see glimpses of this with the data exchanges, the parameter service and other related projects, but, um, you know, how we support kind of the life cycle of that data and that diversity of that data across tools is absolutely front of mind. So, uh, you know, stay tuned and, you know, many of the features you're probably going to start to see are going to bleed into these types of ideas. So. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Colin also says there is some reluctance to to adopt Revit as our primary design platform because our production team finds the default families to be lacking. They are uncomfortable creating their own families. Are there plans to make the library of families more robust or to make the family editor more intuitive? Uh, I, I think what I'd say there is, we, you know, we'd love to get feedback um, about the types of content that you want to include, the improvements that we could make around the libraries that are added, um, you'll see on our public our map, actually, we're working on some new sample models and some new content um, that is intended to make things a little bit better overall uh, and to give you a better sample project that you can pull data from as well. So we know that that's an important way to see how Revit's being used. Um, but yeah, if, if folks want to share, uh, you know, the, the things that are frustrating, the things that you think are lacking in that area, we'd love to get that feedback. Thanks, Harlan. Addis asks, are there 
planned 3D perspective view modeling improvements. Panning and rotating camera sometimes are very hard as, pers as perspective shifts. Um, right now, we don't have any kind of specific areas here that we're, we're making around uh, navigation. Um, you might not be aware, we added the ability to walk in a perspective view and kind of fly mode. It's a little bit hard to find. Um, there's a little airplane if you go into perspective view, and then you can use the WSD keys, which we find a lot better once people find it. We are looking at other things that are possible in that area, and it's sort of on our radar um, for where's, but for what we want to be able to do, but nothing specific right now that we've actually uh, added to the roadmap. Another question for Sam, will the new twin motion pipeline also function for DataSmith export to UE5? Yes, it does. So our latest release of the DataSmith export will allow you to take that twin motion model into Unreal Engine 5. So you could either go from Revit and export that as a DataSmith file or go into, uh, I guess, the Epic Games launcher and get the twin motion importers and bring them in. So that's one thing that you get with getting access to twin motion is access to the Epic Games tools. So to kind of paint a picture of the options, um, I actually took the, the lake house that is our project sample from twin motion. I could bring that into Unreal Engine and I scanned um, my face and made a metahuman and was able to run around like a, a video game around that project. So that is an option or out, outline that you could do with your project. So those possibilities are there, those opportunities are there. So that is um, a part of what you get with your Revit license. So um, if you're looking for that, that's going to be in the marketplace under the Twin Motion Data Smith importer. So I can share some links to that. But um, yeah, Colin, nice to see you here. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Sam. Uh, Colin says, as silly as it sounds, I miss the AutoCAD command line. How many cookies do I need to bake and send to get a Revit command line? I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in on this one and say, Colin, it's gonna have to be at least 10 dozen and they have to be chocolate chip. So, <laughs> Harlan, any thoughts on it that? It depends one? on how good of a baker he is. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know. yeah. No, no like we don't take bribes. <laughs> um, yeah, the command line. I mean, that's an interesting. It's a great comment. Appreciate it. You know, we are constantly looking at feedback around usability, discoverability, making things easier. Um, so I appreciate that feedback uh, as we go forward, and we're you know open to the consideration. You know, we've heard that we've heard it before, um, but there's been other things on our on our lists we looked at first. Yeah, having used AutoCAD in my my previous life and made that transition to Revit, I know that that's probably the biggest um, shocker when you get into Revit is that there is no command line. But, uh, you know, hopefully things can work out for you. All right. Uh, Simeon asks, will Twin Motion Cloud be included for Revit users? Access to share presentations via links to con content created within Twin Motion. Yeah, that is currently a limitation right now with the collaboration, but that's one of the really nice things about this partnership is that we are going to be investing more into the workflow. So um, ideally, we'll be able to kind of make that much easier to you. If you wanted to, you could go in and create an Epic Games account and still get access to that. But right now, as far as the most simple workflow, it is not available right now, but uh, we are working on it. So hopefully we'll get it to you soon. Thanks, Sam. Uh, Harlan, a question about the roadmap. Can you please explain the new roadmap closely? What do you mean by in progress, up next, and later in the matter of time and order of release approximately? Um, not to be flippant or, or <laughs> I think, but no. <laughs> um, I can't. Um, what I can tell you is, you know, those, 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 uh, those labels do represent kind of a sequence of what we're working on um, and when we think they may, uh, how soon they may appear in the product. Unfortunately, I cannot give you a time frame or dates on any of those areas, but uh, you hopefully can read into those terms and not think, uh, not, you know, you can make your own judgment on what you think they mean. I'm gonna put it that way right now. Um, we are looking at better ways to provide this information, but right now we're limited by what's available. So. Uh, Right now, it's just in progress up next, and uh, we'll see it later. And then, 
not now, and launched. Thanks, Harlan. Uh, interesting question. Would that just jump to the top? Would from David? Would Formit be? <laughs> Will Formit be integrated with Twinmotion to close the design concept workflow between Revit and Formit? This is a great question, and I have to admit, I do not know that much about uh, the kind of plans for this. Harlan, do you have any insight into, into this at all? Um, what I can say is, you know, as part of the partnership uh, with Sam and the Twinmotion team, we're considering where do we go next? What do we work on right now? The priority is Revit. Uh, to continue to build out the integration. And you can see some of the things that we are planning in our roadmap. Um, we're, we're, we're committed to working together and making sure this is not just Revit only. So, but I can't really say what we're, where we're gonna go next. Publishing piece is important. Substitution, I think gets brought up a little bit later. And one of the things is we recognize as well as making the install easier, um, but we're gonna continue to work closely with Epic and excited for where, you know, where we can go next. Yeah, it seems uh, like there's some excitement in the chat over this, so this is good to see. Uh, I am, I will post our uh, road here as well in the chat. It's going to be somewhat very similar to the Autodesk one as well, but I'm bringing this up because we do have a submit idea in the top right corner of it, and this is where we go to validate our uh, next releases and features. So we find it very valuable to have that data. So if you have suggestions, and for instance, this would be a great um, opportunity to share that with us so that we can gather that information and know that it is something that uh, you all would like to have. All right. Thank you, Sam and Harlan. Uh, I, I am seeing a couple questions in the chat. Let me see if I can uh, pick up a few of those and then we'll go back to Slido. Uh, Manuel just asked, is the new real topography tool uh, being released with Revit 2024. Again, unfortunately, I can't give away <laughs> some things. Um, so if you, but I definitely encourage if you want to be more engaged and, and see what's going on, check out our preview release mm -hmm. uh, and go to the, the feedback.autodesk.com site and you can sign up and see what's going on there. Sorry, Manuel, our, our hands are tied there. Uh, Dario asks, any plan to concact text parameters and formulas? Um, this is a long-standing request, so I appreciate the question for sure. Um, you know, we added, I think, a couple of releases ago, the ability to combine parameters in both tags and schedules. We recognize, though, that formula editing uh, is, is something that's pretty critical um, overall. Um, right now, though, we don't have current plans uh, on our roadmap to do this, but know that it's on our radar and we are looking at ways that we can improve different uh, aspects of creating formulas. Okay. Great. Uh, Muhammad asks, any plans about creating family templates to verify the LOD and models? Like if I'm working in site, the model should comply with LOD 400. Uh, if there are any templates from Revit uh, that support this as a sample, it would be very helpful as a consultant. Right now, there's no, no definitive plans on you know, making templates be LOD aware or understanding them. Um, you know, we recognize though that like standard management and, and connecting to tools and making that easy to do uh, is definitely important. And that's something where our data initiatives specifically like Mike and Matt can talk about a little bit. Um, you know, our parameter service is a great example of allowing you to standardize parameters across different aspects of your project or different, pro different project teams, even being able to share those more broadly. Um, those aspects, but yeah, right now there's not no plan changes to our templates um, to support that. Uh, but you know, it's something we'll we can think about and appreciate the feedback. Awesome. I saw that that Rick has an electrical question. Rick, I'm going to point you to our electrical uh, MEP AMA a little bit later in the week. We'll get you those links uh, in a little bit. And let me go back to Slido. A question from John. Uh, about the roadmap, where do ACC and BIM 360 roadmap items reside, uh, particularly in interested in publishing linked models? I think I Bogan, you an might be able to answer the published linked models question. Yeah. We will dig up where if and where they have that. I'm not sure where the roadmaps are. Okay. Yeah, so about publishing, uh, publishing the linked models, that's actually on the 
Revit side as well. And uh, we are looking at uh, improving the whole publishing uh, workflow and it includes the linked models. Uh, Chris says, in the longer term, I heard about Forma. Is the plan to eventually have Revit become part of a cloud application platform? That is an excellent question. It's a very good question. Um, I think <laughs> as as Forma, you know, develops and and grows, and we learn from customers, you're going to see a, a you know a tight integration across our portfolio not just with Revit, um, but I think the exact technical aspects of how that looks is yet to be determined as we as we work forward. Um, but it's definitely, you know, uh, part of our vision to have one platform for AEC um, where all aspects of the project can come together. So um, as we look to, you know, support that and move forward, you know, a lot of our, a lot of what we do will be driven by customer feedback. That's a great answer. Uh, Ada says, are there any plans to add view references to annotation text notes block so that it is possible to link a view in the text note block? Yeah, this type of thing, it, again, it, this is a great request. Um, it's on our radar. It's something we want to be able to support, you know, documentation and documentation standards and being able to support cross-referencing views between within text. Um, we see that uh, it's on our radar, but not yet on our roadmap. Okay. All right. Our friend Scott Davis out in California says, Lily, I'm excited about the new roadmap for Dynamo. Can you talk about some of the upcoming features there? Yeah. Hi, Scott. Uh, we are going to talk about this a lot more in the session that we have coming up in, I guess, an hour and a half. Um, so welcome you to come there, but I'll just say quickly um, that we are um, the themes that we're working on for new features uh, in Dynamo computational design are uh, around authoring, trying to make it easier for people to put their own logic in to uh, run workflows in Revit and Civil 3D, Informit, um, and we are also investing in helping people share those workflows um, easier, more easily. Uh, and then the third one I would say is uh, moving pieces of computational design to the cloud. So being able to store your graphs in the cloud using ACC, using BIM 360, um, and eventually being able to run them in the cloud. And this is all part of our kind of desktop eventual transition um, to the cloud. It's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of customer ingenuity um, and support. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, welcome more questions in our in our computational design session coming up. Awesome. Thank you, Lily. All right, Ada says this is the most important question. Okay, uh, multi-thread processor usage. The last four to five Red Revit versions, there are no improvements added to Revit help information. Uh, for example, my processor uses a maximum of 30% when panning plans, but the panning is lagging. Yeah, I mean, um, well, a couple of comments there, I guess. So we're always considering ways that we can improve performance. In fact, that's a big area of focus for us as we go forward. Um, sometimes it's not just about multi, uh, multi-threading or processor usage or number of cores. It's about optimizing where the computation takes place uh, and how that happens. And so, um, like we added some some improvements around vector printing um, for multi-process, multi-core in the last update. Sometimes you have to read through our release notes to get handled on that um, because it might be something that shows up uh, that's already listed as like, yeah, we. You know, at a high level, we, we do printing with multi-threading, for example. Um, but uh, and to get some of the details, our our robust release notes can be helpful there. Um, but yeah, performance is a huge topic of interest for us. Um, and you know, panning, as that example comes up, is probably actually more related to things like how we're displaying things on the screen. Um, and so one of the areas that we're also working on is the ability to modernize Revit's graphics pipeline. Um, which is a pretty exciting, but again, a long-term project um, that is not going to be, you know, 
uh, easily obvious in the beginning about what's actually happening because a lot of it has to do with how we're refactoring the core platform under the hood um, to take advantage of newer technology. So that's something we do all the time with Revit whenever we're in an area, but graphics in particular has a, a pretty heavy lift there because we're also aware that you know, you're generating contractual documents and things can't change. Um, and so that's a big consideration as we move forward in that area. All right, next question. How is, I'm not sure if you want to touch this one, how is Revit's long-term vision affected by the open letters sent to Autodesk? I would just generally say that our, our roadmaps and plans are constantly evolving and changing based on the feedback that we receive. Um, you know, letters are part of that feedback. I don't really treat them any differently than any other feedback at the end of the day. Um, then what we get, uh, even if they're in a public forum, but we go through them like we would, you know, even if you go and submit a thing on the new public roadmap and say, this is super critical, we view that as another input into our process. Um, and so many of the things in the open letter are not things that are surprising or were unknown or we're not aware of um, in general. Uh, and, you know, they help us uh, understand what our customers are thinking and doing and like I said, feedback, I've said this many times, feedback is a gift. Um, we open it and we try to make adjustments. And I hope you guys see that as, a, you know, part of why we do these AMAs um, is we are trying to make sure that we're more transparent and having two-way conversations about what we're working on and doing and letting you influence our direction. Thank you, Harlan. Uh, MJ asks, will keynoting in Revit move past the external .txt file? posted to a local server. This creates a bottleneck in our workflow and seems outdated. Tab delimited, ugh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think in the general text files, you know, are it, it, it works. <laughs> uh, and I think we'd recognize this, you know, with our parameter service, one of the things we moved away from is a text file. With the shared parameter service in the cloud, now you have that ability to actually share these things without that file. I you know, envision someday we'll be moving in the same direction for all sorts of things um, inside of Revit, um, but it's going to be incremental and it'll happen over time. Right now, there's no, you know, concrete plans that we're going to move keynotes in that direction, um, but we'll continue to evolve our plans as we learn more and as people use these tools. Okay. Uh, this one we sort of touched on a while ago. Uh, Clayton says, is there any possibility we could incorporate material tagging in legends and bridging materials into regular schedules more than just the type of material like material marks and description would be greatly helpful i'm just reading that question again um <laughs> taking legends bridging i'm not sure what bridging materials means exactly um you know we we are trying to make things a lot more consistent is how to answer this question. Um, so we're definitely interested in simplification and making it so that you don't have to use specific, like in the schedule case, specific types of schedules for specific things um, and be limited by where you can execute certain things within the application. So we're trying to build in more consistency overall. Um, I'd love to get, I guess, more feedback about that from Clayton. Um, there are things that we're working on around materials and looking at definitely and things on our road are in our radar, I should say, about where we're working on materials and where we want to go there, um, and especially as it pertains to other projects on our roadmap. So um, love to get more detail from Clayton about what's going on there, but we can maybe take that later. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Harlan. Thank you, Clayton. Uh, Phil says uh, allowance of third party plugins for Revit LT. <laughs> um, yeah, that's something that's not currently planned. Um, you know, one of the things we try to do with Revit LT is recognize that it's it's a lot simpler product overall. Um, and so we do not allow uh, third party plugins for LT and are generally even care very careful about internal ones um, unless there was very specific uh, something going on that we're using. But um, yeah, so I'd love to know more uh, which plugins, if you guys have requests for that, be interesting to know. We hear a lot of, of a lot about them. Um, sometimes, you know, people want plugins that are more expensive than LT in LT, which seems is sort of a funny thing uh, from my point of view, but I understand there's a lot of requests and there's a lot of needs around LT um, as well, but 
right now, no, no current plans to enable LTDEV API functionality. All right, Aaron asks, and we'll probably take this one to uh, the ACC team, will there be a tool to transfer BIM 360 Collaborate projects to ACC to elevate active projects? We can yeah, take I think that I would to the ACC this is one for that team, but we've definitely yep. heard this request um, and understand like the transition between the two is not as smooth as it should be. And I, I do think there are some, um, there's things on our radar on the ACC side about how this how this can be improved overall and then looking at it, but um, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Harlan. Uh, Thomas asks, and this one just jumped out, what kind of ACC modules or Revit features can we expect in the future regarding AI? That is a great question. <laughs> I'm obsessed with chat GTP. <laughs> Checked it out yet? Uh, I don't know the answer to that really. I mean, we're doing a lot of things around, um, you know, how how AI yeah, can be used. I think it is a relative, you know, there's a lot of possibilities there. I know on the generative side, we've had some some feedback um, and some things going on that are pretty interesting. Uh, I think it's going to play a larger role in how we do things going forward, but um, and sort of an exciting time to be looking at that <laughs> uh, for sure. But I, I would say I don't really have an, an opinion yet on exactly what features you're going to see or how they're going to manifest themselves in the product. But definitely would, in the area. Uh, add one thing to what Arlen's saying. Totally agree. Um, but this is a huge opportunity for you guys to tell us, you know, what would you like to do use of AI for? Give us the feedback. Let us know. We're also looking to uh, provide more packages to access some of these AI tools more easily in Dynamo, um, which can be a great place for experimentation. There's so many interesting ideas out there with doing better help content, rendering content, um, all kinds of really interesting things that um, haven't even been thought of yet. Well, and I will say one of the things that is on our roadmap that is related to AI is we're, we're looking at what we call product usage insights, which takes information about what you're what you're actually doing in the product and then presents you with kind of command recommendations based on similar users. So it understands like, hey, you're similar usage to these other people. They use this command. Um, you might be interested in learning more about this other command that that, that similar uh, user. So that's some of the basic stuff that we're kind of looking at, which might be interesting, it might not be interesting. Again, I, I think it's pretty early um, as we go forward, but some exciting things definitely are coming, I think, in that area that we're going to be exploring. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, this one just jumped up uh, into us, says, in a previous AMA, the idea was raised to consolidate the massing environment with the family environment to revamp modeling. Will modeling finally get some love? For example, 3D fillet, chamfer, lofting with rails, et cetera. Yeah, this is always on our radar, you know, areas that we can improve around Revit's core kind of modeling capability, something that we're looking at. Um, I don't think that, would, that last AMA was the only time this has been raised, uh, but it's definitely, an, you know, we recognize that you know, having multiple environments is also not an easy thing to learn and to understand. Um, so, you know, in that sense, uh, we're still, you know, on our radar for ways that we can improve this generally. Okay. All right. Rick asks, what improvements are being made for larger models? Slow opening of files and lag as customers want a large deliverable file. Some files take 30 minutes to open currently. Uh, like I said before, before and this is an area of focus for us overall. Um, you know, if you have model examples that are taking that long, we'd love to see them. That's my first call out here. If you have them, you can reach out to us, uh, give us feedback about, about what's going on. Um, if you want to reach out directly, you know, you can do that through the Revit preview. Um, if, if you can share those problems. We also have a feedback alias you can send emails to as well, which we can get posted. Um, those are examples that we're looking at. And we are looking at things like file open, uh, in particular, and, and in particular for projects that are on the outliers. We typically see customers, you know, actually not having 30 minutes opening file. That's sort of an outlier in a lot of cases. Um, so we love to get that as a sample, but 
um, that's an area that we're definitely going to be investing in as we go forward as well. Okay. All right. Uh, Dan says, looking at the topography improvements, what's specifically in the pipeline for this? Can you expand what's said on the roadmap? Um, you know, the main thing that's on the roadmap right now and is about a solid site topography, which I know we're asking you to read a lot into that, but and I can add some more context to that. Um, basically, what's been requested and what is really needed is the ability to kind of do cutting and voids with topography, or in this case, solid elements, and recognize them as topography. The main reason is for, you know, quantities, calculations, and the ease of actually creating things like underground structures, basements, um, that are more complex in shape. Um, so that's what we're looking at in the early days here, is the ability to more easily model solid elements with sites, um, the ability to cut them, the ability to join them, the ability to have multi-layers for them, like, which is a you know, very common thing, you, have, you might have grass and dirt and substrate underneath. Um, so, and then, you know, that requires completely rethinking how topography works in Revit um, and, you know, the tools that work with it. So there's a lot of changes that we're looking at um, overall and, you know, they're gonna, gonna fundamentally change workflows. And we're also looking at, you know, how we can improve the experience of modeling, uh, you know, other aspects of the site and how they work together. Um, so it's a pretty, you know, what we're looking at is a pretty big fundamental change to how Revit functions in regard to site. Uh, and, you know, giving you a lot more flexibility and power really to model the things as they're gonna be built. So hopefully that helps. It's not a lot of detail, but it's hard to go into and answer that in a couple of minutes and get to more questions. So sorry about that. Phil's, there's gonna be a lot to talk about, uh, about site though. For sure. All right. Uh, Rick's question just jumped up to the top. Will there ever be a macro recorder like you can use in Excel to create routines? That's a, a great idea. You know, we've seen that in AutoCAD. We've seen that from others. There's been rec you know, requests to be able to do that. Um, you know, we also looked at Dynamo really here. Um, there's some, you know, great capabilities. It's a little, Revit's a little more complicated though in a lot of ways for recording things and how we access our API. Um, so it's not as like cut and dry as, you know, I'm just cutting and pasting stuff or doing an operation and now I need to apply that to multiple elements. Um, it is something we've, you know, we'll consider and, and be looking at for the future. Not right now in our plans though. All right. Well, I'm going to take a stab at Keith's question. Uh, what is the best way to provide feedback? We have loads of examples of frustrations and often post on both the ideas board and on Twitter, but the former is still a bit chaotic, although much better since Kimberly took over. Thank you, Keith. <laughs> and Twitter is more of an avenue to let off some steam and frustration. Yeah, absolutely, Keith. And, uh, you know, as Harlan said, we are always looking for uh, feedback from our customers, and we like a wide variety of feedback from our customers. So the Revit Ideas is just one place that you can give feedback. Uh, we also have our preview release, our beta, where you have a little bit more direct contact with our product teams. Uh, we have our research community. If you don't have a whole lot of time to devote to testing uh, at the beta release, you can go to our research community and give feedback there. Uh, we also have some inside the factory events coming up. Uh, we have a, a virtual event coming up in February. So uh, look for some uh, advertising on that. Uh, and you can join our product teams live to do testing for about an hour or two out of your day uh, and uh, you know also the community conversations so you can always join and talk uh, you know with with others in the industry uh, with our community conversations and Sean will uh, provide links for those a little bit later on so um, yeah, thank you so much, Keith. I pre certainly appreciate your feedback and uh, just know that we, you know, we do come through all of it. All right. Uh, Addis says, will DWG export adopt PDF export settings? Right now, no. Uh, they are totally separate things um, and not related. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Mark. Uh, 
Could you discuss how the company plans to incorporate Revit and model coordination? Some nudging here would be to discuss grids, levels, system colorization, and 2D overlays in model coordination for creating and managing issues in Revit, maturing clash detection with Revit, and so forth. There's a lot there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, model coordination is definitely an area that we're looking at. You can actually, you'll see that on our public roadmap that we have things in flight about, uh, about model coordination, specifically making it a lot easier right now to link things from Autodesk Docs, as well as general improvements to how you, how you interact with those. Um, you know, we, we want to align these two areas uh, across ACC and Revit to make surfacing that information much easier within the Revit model. Um, you know, our intention is not really to replace uh, like clash detection on the cloud or anything like that, but we wanna make it much easier to interact with that information in a consistent way. Um, and so, you know, we've been actually partnering with our ACC teams and colleagues around how do we connect to the construction cloud? How do we incorporate their um, add-in that they have that's available for model review and issues and seeing those issues on the site. Um, so you'll definitely see us continuing to invest in this space um, and, and make it easier to kind of connect across the two, the two work areas um, and surface that information where it makes the most sense for, for everyone. Okay. All right, we just have just a few minutes left. I want to get to some of the twin motion questions uh, for Sam. Uh, Art on God says, when will we be able to directly sync the Revit trees to twin motion? I see a lot of videos demonstrating the live link before and after aspect, but right now the only way to do the same is through the replace objects feature, unless a new update has rolled on. Yeah, this is great to hear that this is um, something that you would like to see. So this is something that we are working with, uh, with our partnership with Autodesk. So we're trying to see how we can make substitution a little bit easier and smoother in the process. So I don't have a firm timeline for you, but that is something that we are working on. Awesome. And also on, for Twin Motion, Sarah asks, one of my engineering customers uses Twin Motion plus VR with their clients to present proposals. Who can I speak to about guest access and ease of use for non twin motion or Revit users? Yeah, you can speak to me. So uh, I hope I'm answering your question correctly. But if you are a Revit user, you do have access to the commercial twin mo motion license. So in the chat, I'm going to post a documentation site that is going to take you through the steps to download that. So uh, you'll be able to go into your accounts on, on the, your Autodesk site and download it and then be able to use it. As far as ease of use, I would argue you could learn it over lunch. Our goal is to make it as easy to use as possible. So I will also share our YouTube page that is going to have some getting started videos uh, that will be able to help you learn uh, twin motion. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. A question for Mike on parameter service from Jason. Is there a plan to limit modification to individuals rather than all account admins? Yeah, the, the permissions on the parameter service and even more generally to uh, data. And I think I saw a question about ACC and work sets, like getting permissions more flexible on your data is absolutely front of mind. Um, parameter service, we're really looking at and discussing with our partners in ACC to understand that near term, but this is also something we want to support data wise as you see more of these workflows. So, yep. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. All right, back to the top. Ian, is there anything on the roadmap to allow the user to customize the order of the properties browser or being able to customize the order of the family browser similar to views and sheets? Yeah, great question. This is on our radar. Um, you know, we uh, recognize that this is an area in particular for as we handle data that, that is going to be critically important uh, as we move forward and you're having to manage all these parameters. Um, yeah, so definitely important note and we appreciate the comment and feedback that yeah, it's, it's, it's something that we're looking at and how we can incorporate it. Okay. And we'll try to squeeze as many questions in as we can here. Uh, just jumped again. Addis asks, any plans to add embodied carbon information to the Revit model? 
Uh, embodied carbon is part of our total carbon work. And so, yes, <laughs> and not directly into the Revit model per se, but we're working on a, an updated version of Insight that we're excited about um, that will uh, include embodied carbon. And we're looking at how we can include operational carbon in that model that connects up to a material database. So you can actually set up your own CO2 efficient, uh, you know, can't even say the word right now, but you can set up your own material information and actually extract what's on the Revit model. So that's sustainability is definitely an area of focus for us and something we're excited about being able to, uh, you know, think about and, and get up there. Awesome. Uh, Phil asks uh, Revit for OSX. Nope. nope. <laughs> so if you want to see, you Easy can see answer. a long answer I gave. You can look at the not now column. Um, for a couple of you know common questions you guys can refer to, we decided to put those, put that item as well as uh, background compatibility, which comes up all the time, which a former a colleague of ours, still out of that, Sasha Carty, had written and recopied there for easy reference. So you guys can go read those replies. Um, and if there is other comments you guys have or other questions or things that I my answer is simply no, you will see, you will see them show up there over time as well. As well. All right. Uh Nauman contributed, the macro recorder is available in the debug tab for Revit. So, uh, so you know that it's there. Thank you, Nauman. Uh, Clayton, we'll do one more. Clayton, need the, need the ability to add uh, material parameters to ske standard schedules. For example, door schedule, uh, standard schedule, the ability to add the material parameters uh, to standard schedules such as mark or material description, also additionally family type parameters in standard schedule other than just the type name. I'm sorry, I was I was <laughs> I was looking at something else. Can yeah. you repeat that again? Uh, yeah, I need the ability to add per material parameters to the standard schedules. Uh, such as mark found, or material I description. Found, I found it in the slide. Um, <laughs> okay, I appreciate the feedback for sure. We don't have current plans around that one, but it, it's definitely great. Um, you know, we'll note that down. And maybe one just last real quick clarification question from Sam on the beta group. If the main beta is going to be public, do you see the beta site changing? Um, I, don't I don't think it's going public. It's we're changing the way we you access it. Yeah, as far public. as being able to um, sign up. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Our sign up is a lot easier. As well. yeah. So it used to be a little bit more cumbersome to get signed up to participate in the beta. Um, now it's called an open opportunity, meaning that anyone who signs our agreement around confidentiality uh, and and talking about the the preview can participate simply by going to the link if they have an Autodesk ID account. Um, so it doesn't change the rules around participation. It doesn't change anything about uh, the types of feedback you can provide or uh, the research that we're doing there. Uh, the site doesn't change the same technology and we don't have plans to change that, um, but it's just now easier to get signed up and participate rather than needing a special invite. Awesome. Thank you, Harlan. Well, that hour went very, very quickly. I want to thank all of our speakers, our panelists, and our attendees. Uh, the recording will be available soon. Uh, again, thank you for joining us. We do have other uh, roadmap Ask Me Anything's happening later today and this week. Feel free to sign up for those. And uh, again, just thank you for your time. Uh, we'd love to have your feedback. I'm not sure why my screen's not advancing here, <laughs> maybe too far. Again, our, our community team is working hard again to connect you with our product teams and uh, connect you with your colleagues. So check out all of the different uh, ways you can connect with the Autodesk community. Uh, have a fantastic week, everyone, and we'll see you soon. Take care.